Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on the creation of a water material in Rhino 7. We're going to be following on from the previous tutorials looking at material creation in Rhino 7 and I'm going to be using this same example I was working with in those videos. Now we've got a swimming pool at the bottom of this view here and I'm going to be applying my water texture to this pool. So we're going to create a new material, we're going to make it physically based as we did with the previous materials. I'm going to just call this water and we'll apply this to my object so we can track the changes as we go and we can look at this in rendered view while we do it so we can see what's changing so at the moment it's just a white material there now first thing we want to do is open up the base color as we did before we're going to set the roughness to zero and we're going to keep the base color as a white for now then, just as we did for glass, we're going to open up the opacity panel and under the opacity, we're going to set the opacity to zero. And now you can see it's a perfectly kind of see-through material there. You can see part of my pool isn't modelled, but that's okay for this particular view. And we're going to change the IOR, which is the incidence of refract refraction, to a 1.33. And this is the kind of real world refractive value for water and it's slightly different to glass and that's why when you kind of see things underwater they have they look like the kind of light is bending and the object appears smaller more condensed than it would do if you're looking for a pane of glass so that's the refraction index and that's this value here and you can look up real world values for different materials online but for water it's 1.33 in that value so as well as that we're going to also open up the specularity and we're going to put the specularity up to a 1 as well. So those are those settings on there and we'll go back to our view and we'll just test this out in a render preview here. And we'll let that load up. And here you can see essentially what we've done is we've applied a glass material to the surface of that water and in effect it's kind of working quite well. We've got our reflections you can see it's reflecting the sky nicely and reflecting the surrounding buildings as well. At the moment though it's perfectly flat and with the water you might have some sort of surface ripples on there which would distinguish it from a glass material. So that's the sort of slight difference you might get. Also sometimes with swimming pool water you might have a slightly bluish tint to the water that you might want to add. So we're going to start by trying to add in that very slight blue tint to the water. Now to do that I'm just going to close that preview down and we're just going to change the base colour of our water. I'm going to scroll to the blue here and very subtly we're just going to take the little kind of colour marker which is at the moment on full white colour and we're going to slide it slightly to the left but ever so slightly. There's only tiny tiny bit just so it gets a tiny bit of that blue color in the valley there and you can see it there it's a very very pale blue and if we do a render preview again you can kind of see it in the sort of screen here but it's basically given the water a very subtle blue tint and this will work quite well with sort of um, swimming pool water or anything that you just want to add a subtle color tint and you can kind of see it there on the left hand side that we've now given it that very subtle blue tint which just distinguishes it slightly from the glass material. So now that's added on we're going to try and add on some ripples to the water. Now to do this we're going to be using in our detailed settings we're going to open up the bump normal and displacement. Whenever we're looking at changing the surface and adding some bumpiness or some unevenness to the surface of our geometry we're going to be using the bump so with that open, I'm going to scroll down to our bump and normal map and we're going to click to assign a texture. Now we're not actually going to assign a photo texture as we have done previously, but once this dialog comes up, we're actually going to go down to here where it says choose from more texture types. If we click on that option, we then get this sort of Rhino texture type dialog box and it has a lot of different types of texture you can add in which come built in within Rhino. And the one we're going to be adding to apply a kind of sort of ripply surface to our water is this texture here called turbulence texture. And I'm going to click OK. 
Now, when you open that in, you'll see in your materials panel, you'll get some new options come up for this turbulence texture. And you can kind of see it has now been applied to the surface of the water there. Now, we're not going to change any of these settings. I'm actually just going to hit the back button at the top here. And we're going to go back to our water texture there. And by default, it puts it on at 30% and it kind of adds that map to our material. Now, when you add any sort of photo maps or image maps as textures, we need to make sure we're mapping them correctly to our material. So we're sizing them correctly to that material. So to do that, we're just going to go back to the properties, go to texture mapping, apply box mapping, and I'm just going to start, I'm just going to draw on a random box and hit enter. Now it doesn't matter the size of that because once you've applied it, you get this XYZ size that comes up on the object and we can type in the exact size we want. So I'm going to do it one meter by one meter by one meter. You can see there that that's changed the scale of that texture to suit the size I've typed in. And now with those settings we're now going to give it a test and have a look and see what this is coming out as. Now when adding anything like this, it's quite hard to see the real effects in the viewport, so you often need to do a few render previews to kind of get the effect of the water and so we can see really what it looks like. So we'll just wait for that to load up and here you go, as you can see, that that's now applied that ripply effect to the surface. Now by default, as you can see, it's quite strong and I'd say that probably for this particular image this is slightly too strong for the effect we're going for it's almost looking like a kind of choppy sea rather than a swimming pool so I'm going to play around with this sort of the strength of this texture and also the scale so I think it's also slightly bigger than I want it so we'll stop that preview and I'm going to keep this preview up so we can refer back to it but I'm going to change the XYZ size, we're going to make it smaller. I'm going to make it a 0 0.3 by 0 0.3 3 there. So it's really reduced the scale of that texture. And you can kind of see in the preview here, it's got a lot smaller on the ripples. And then also in this bump and normal map, by default, it's on a 30% rating. And we're going to change that right down to just a 1% for this image because we want it quite subtle. And you'll see here it almost might go invisible in this preview. That doesn't mean when you render it out it will be invisible. It's always good to do a render preview to test how it's actually looking because this view can be slightly inaccurate because it gives a kind of rough approximation of that render. So let's try again. We'll do a render preview and we'll have a look to see how this texture is working there. and we can compare that to the previous one when this loads up as well. So we can have a look and see what the difference is. There you go. And as you can see now, we're a lot more subtle. We're still getting the ripples in our water and we get that nice kind of breakup of the reflections as well, which is kind of how you want to apply these. So it's looking really nice here, where we've got this kind of reflection of this building just breaking up in the water surface but it's nowhere near as intense as the first one we did. And I'll stop that there and just bring that one up. So you can see the difference in these two images here. This is the kind of first option where we had the 30% on our water texture. It was a lot rougher and we also had the scale a bit larger and this is kind of scaled down and lowering that percentage. So you can see the sort of difference between them. And it's just a case of adjusting those values, adjusting the scale to the sort of output that you want to get. If you want a lot of rougher water texture, you can go for sort of this option. And if you want a smoother, sort of less ripply, you can go for the one on the left. So it's a case of finding the balance between those two. So that was a quick video tutorial on adding a water texture into your Rhino 7 renders. Um, I hope that was helpful. And in the next video, we'll be going through a few more textures completing this image and then we'll be looking at post-production in this image as well. So thank you for watching.